Welcome to our virtual worship service um, on this seventh Sunday of Easter, Memorial Day Sunday. Uh, my name is Scott Furukawa. I'm pastor at Wailua United Church of Christ. If you're visiting uh, our online service for the first time, uh, so glad you could be with us. And for those of you who have uh, seen our previous uh, worship services online, uh, welcome back. Uh, so, are we getting a little stir-crazy yet? Yeah, I know. I know, but, you know, we'll get th through this together, and just we'll just pray together, and uh, we'll get through this with God's help. So, this time, I'd like to um, have some of our friends, our church family, friends, and members to say hello to you, and I'll take this time to introduce our Worship leader today, uh, Florence Kamani. Finance committee, okay. hello, goodbye, mm -hmm. shaka. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha, WUCC Ohana. We miss you. Greetings from the Hall family in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Hanako. Hello to the Wailua UCC family. We are walking on the Wailua bike path. Hi everybody, this is Lynn and Hanako. We just wanted to say hi to everybody on the online service. Hope you're doing well, be safe, and be joyful. Good morning. Welcome to our virtual worship Sunday. Call to worship. We long to be in community and rejoice in the presence of God. We live and give our being in service to you, O God. Christ tells us we will never be alone. The Holy Spirit will share our journey. We will live and share in community and celebrate together. May the eternal love of God be with you. And may the love of Christ live in us and through us. The Prayer of Invocation in Unison God of all creation, giver of life and breath, we come seeking your counsel and guidance. Reveal yourself to us, dwell within us, and stand with us. We live because of you, we hope because of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, in whom we live, and the spirit of trust within us, we say the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hi church family, welcome back to another week of worship. Uh, we're glad that you're here. You know, during this time of the pandemic, people are worried, anxious, and they're distracted. And There's a lot of distractions going on, but our, formal, our foremost uh, attention should be to our Lord to practice His presence, not not so much social distancing, but practice His presence and we know that Christ is the one that matters the most. So let's sing this song together, it's called All That Matters and give Him all the praise that He deserves. Thank you. 
children to uh, come over to your computer screens or your iPhone screens for uh, our children's message. I'll give you a little bit of time to get here. Well, you know, you can see that all the children and all the youth in this screen here are a little distracted, okay? But I'm going to be talking to you out there. Okay, this is, this is for you, all right? You know, how many of you have seen the movie The Lion King? Raise your hands, okay? I think there's a few of you who have seen the movie. And you know, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when uh, Rafiki, you know, the, the talking baboon, which is kind of strange, but anyway, talking baboon, Rafiki, and he is talking to Simba, the young lion. And, um, and, you know, Simba is, is really sad. And, you know, he's, he's sad with, uh, with the death of his father. And so Simba is, is lost. He doesn't know who he is without his father being there. And so Rafiki says to Simba, I know where your father is. And so Simba gets excited, and the two of them go running through the jungle, and then they finally they stop at this pool of water, all right? And, and, and Rafiki says, okay, look down into the pool of water. And Simba looks down and, and he complains, you know, this is not my father. It's just my reflection in the water. And so Rafiki says, no, look harder, look again. And so Simba looks, and he then begins to recognize his father in the reflection. And Rafiki says, you see, he lives in you. Your father lives in you. You know, and this reminds me of, of a Bible story. This is a time when, when Jesus... Uh, is saying goodbye to his disciples because he'll be leaving them to go back to heaven to, to be with God, his Father. And of course, you know, the disciples are sad knowing that Jesus will be leaving them. And so they're feeling lost and they, they forget who they are. And But Jesus reminds them and says to them that you are connected to God. And that remember that God lives in you, lives here in your heart, in your whole being. God lives in you in Jesus. And so Jesus lives in you so that you do things that help others, right? To be kind to others, to be brave, to be courageous. Things that Jesus would do. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Right? So remember that Jesus lives in you, and you are a reflection of Jesus. And so let's, uh, let's say our prayer together. Well, dear God, help us to remember that Jesus lives within us and is with us always. Amen. Till the next time. Let's be together in prayer. Almighty, eternal, 
and loving God. We are grateful for the many ways in which you have touched our lives. And Lord, forgive us when we are so busy that we miss the many ways in which you have revealed yourself to us. And forgive us when we get caught up with our own lives and we miss the needs of many of those who are around us. We turn our hearts, our minds now to those many needs, to the things in your world that need fixing the most. And we pray that you are comfort those who are suffering as a result of this pandemic. Lord, there are many who have contracted the virus, who are suffering, or have family members or friends who have the virus, and those who have suffered the loss of jobs and income because of the shutdown. There is much suffering in the world, Lord, hear our cries for help. And we pray that you will comfort those who are suffering from physical and emotional pains. Be present now to those who need your loving touch and comfort those who are living in fear with anxiety and feelings of isolation as we are forced to remain at home, bring them peace. And Lord, we pray for all the essential workers in our communities as they continue to serve during this crisis, continue to protect them And know that they are essential, but we all are essential in your eyes. Lord, we pray and we remember on this Memorial Day Sunday, all of the service men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we may enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy today. And Lord, help us to be that church, that church that's the beacon of light, that light of Christ in our community. And now we lift up to you the most personal prayers from our hearts and what's on our minds. Hear our prayers, O Lord, and grant us your peace. Amen. The scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be come as we are one. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, and 
you know, it's hard to strike that right balance between, on the one hand, honoring our soldiers and their courage and their sacrifice and, and the loss and the loss for their families. And then on the other hand, not glorifying war, because war is a, is a horrible thing. And so when I think about Memorial Day, I think about Punchbowl National Cemetery. You see, when I was growing up, every Memorial Day, uh, my parents would take my brother and me up to Punchbowl because there we visit and we place flowers on the grave site of uh, my, my dad's older brother, uh, Tsuyoshi. You know, I never met my uncle Tsuyoshi. He was killed in World War II uh, long before I was born. And, you know, he was 26 years old uh, when he died. But in a strange way, I feel like I, I know him just based on the, the letters uh, that I found that he had written to my father and from all the, the many black and white photos of him. Uh, as he was growing up. You know, my uncle was, was tall for a Japanese man, uh, you know, of his generation. And he, he was a handsome guy. And he was also um, skilled at the martial art of judo. And so after the Japanese military uh, attacked Pearl Harbor, he enlisted into the U.S. Army and was in the 100th Infantry Battalion. Um, their, their nickname was One Puka Puka, and their motto was Go for Broke. And so while Tsuyoshi was serving in the U.S. Army, my father was also serving, uh, but he was serving prison time in the Japanese internment camps, first over at Sand Island, and then over at Honolulu Uli in Elba, and then finally at Tule Lake in California. And he, along with 120,000 people of Japanese ancestry, were rounded up, arrested, and placed in these, what was essentially prison camps. And these camps were scattered all across North America. And life in these camps were, were hard, you know, and as a community, they suffered the indignity of an unjust imprisonment by the United States government. Many were actually born in the U.S. and considered this their country. You know, a few years ago, while I was doing uh, some cleaning of my father's things at the old family home, I came across an old letter uh, that was dated October of 1943. And it was a letter that was addressed from my uncle Tsuyoshi to my father. And his unit had just landed on the southern part of Italy to begin the Italian campaign against uh, the German Nazis. And then he would write this in the letter. He said, we hiked about eight miles to a spot not too far from the Germans that we thought would be safe. However, at three o'clock in the morning, we got shelled by mortar rockets. We called them screaming mommies because it made this scary screaming sound when they flew over us as we hunkered down in our trenches. That night, I thought it would be more comfortable sleeping outside rather than inside our narrow trench, so I slept outside. The very first shell that landed hit a jeep parked about 15 feet away and blasted the trailer tailgate off. Boy, that was a close one, he would write. If it wasn't for the jeep, I would have gotten hurt because the man next to me, his helmet and canteen had a couple of holes right through it. And when I thought about that first night, I get goosebumps. Another time, our squad went on patrol walking through an open field when German machine guns opened fire on us. I hit the ground so fast. Another patrol was marching just 
right flank of us, and unfortunately, the machine gun fire was from the right, and a lot of them got hurt. And then Tsuyoshi later writes this about his younger brother's incarceration. He says, brother, I heard you were arrested. God only knows you did nothing wrong. I pray for you every day. God bless you, Tsuyoshi. I pray for you every day. You know, despite battling his own fears of an imminent enemy attack, he writes, I pray for you every day. In the midst of all this danger, all this chaos that, that is surrounding him, he prays for someone he loves. And this was the last letter he would write. Only a few days later, he was killed by a mortar blast. And you know, to me, this letter is not just an older brother's deep love and encouragement for his younger brother, as both of them faced extreme adversity. But it's also a sacred letter about God's presence, about God's love during these times of chaos and uncertainty and fear. These were my uncle's last words. I pray for you every day. And when someone you love or even someone you don't know that well but you have a connection with dies, they die in your heart too, right? And maybe it's their personal story that impacts you. And it's strange, it's, it's kind of spiritual and it's, and it's something that, that spans across time and space. You know, our scripture lesson today finds Jesus giving his final farewell to his disciples. And it's the Last Supper with his friends, and this is the night just before his crucifixion. And he's preparing to leave them, and this is a, a part of a set of chapters that's referred to as the Farewell Discourse. And Jesus looks to the heaven and begins to pray to God. And it's a very personal prayer from Jesus the Son to God the Father. And Jesus prays, and I'll just paraphrase it right now. Say, God, I have done all that you have asked me to do. I have healed people who were sick. I brought sight to a man who was blind. I took Lazarus, my friend who was dead, and brought him back to life. I even calmed the violent storm to show people your great power in me, O oh God. I've done all of that, and now it's time for me to come back to you. And I am praying on behalf of my friends, these disciples. I won't be a part of this world much longer, but they will be here. So protect them, because they are one with you and one with me. I mean, this is such a personal prayer between Jesus and God. But this is also a prayer that was probably overheard by the disciples. And it was meant to be heard by us, too. And what this prayer reveals is, deep, is Jesus' deep love for his disciples. I mean, it's such a powerful thing to pray for someone directly. If you've ever had that happen to you, if someone actually prayed for you directly, I mean, it is a very, very powerful thing. And think about how powerful that is to have Jesus pray to God on your behalf. Eugene Peterson, he, he takes the Bible and he uh, puts it into contemporary language. And he, he puts it this way. He writes, Display the bright splendor of your sun so the sun in turn may show your bright splendor. And then when Jesus speaks of his disciples, 
reflecting him and his teachings, Peterson writes, my life is on display in them. My life is in display in them. I just love that. I love the way he phrased that. And maybe this tells us something about our own call and our own mission. The life of Jesus is on display in you and me. I mean, remember the children's message? You know, Simba, the adult, he's a young adult lion now, and he's still mourning the death of his father, and he's having an identity crisis. He doesn't know who he, who he is. And so he sees a reflection in the pool of water, and he's reminded that his father lives in him, just as Jesus lives in you. You are a reflection of Jesus in the world. So what can we learn about Jesus' prayer? Here's three quick things we can learn. Three quick takeaways from it. First, you can pray at any time, at any place. Jesus prayed in the morning, in the afternoon, or late at night. He prayed in the mountains, he prayed in an open field, he prayed during times of stress, and he prayed to give thanks. In other words, you don't have to, to pray only in church or just before supper. You can pray wherever you are, whatever time of day. You know, some years ago, my daughter, when she was in preschool, uh, they had chapel service. And the pastor there told all the little kids, look, you can pray anytime, any place, right? You can pray even if you're sitting on the toilet. And he did a demonstration. Not that he was going to sit on the toilet. But what he did was he, he stood on his head and he began to pray for the kids that were there. I mean, you don't have to stand on your head to make the point. But the point is that you can pray anytime, anywhere. And prayer was meant to be part of our daily lives. Secondly, pray what's in your heart. Pray what's in your heart. I mean, Jesus sounds, you know, Jesus' prayer sounds a little complicated because that's his relationship with God. And when you pray, it's about your relationship with God. It's your personal relationship. And the main point is that Jesus is praying what is on his heart. And that's how we should pray too. You know, at times, I know we all struggle with prayer, you know, trying to find the right words to say. And, and sometimes we just feel so inadequate. But you don't have to use fancy words. I mean, you don't have to use flowery language. You don't have to be eloquent in your prayer. You're just praying what's on your heart. And you just be true to yourself and you pray in your own words. Pray as if you're talking to your best friend. And pray on whatever may be troubling you. Pray to give thanks for something good that's happened in your life. The bottom line is you just pray what's on your heart. Thirdly, we are not alone when we pray. When we pray, we are not alone. And Jesus is there praying alongside of us and praying for us too. I mean, you can pray in English, Chinese, uh, Japanese, Ilocano, or even Pigeon. Jesus understands you don't even have to speak in your prayer. You can just silently have your thoughts in prayer. And I'll, I'll end with this. The world we live in at times is a hostile place. I mean, look at all the challenges that we have to live with today. And for many people, the cross and the resurrection do not make much sense. 
But as believers, our comfort, our reassurance lies in the knowledge that Jesus has left us in good hands, left us in God's care. And on this Memorial Day, we owe a debt of gratitude to all the brave servicemen and women who have given their lives so that we may live and enjoy the freedoms that we have today. And we will remember them in tributes tomorrow on Memorial Day. As Christians, we also remember the one who suffered and died on the cross and rose from the dead in order that we might live. Remember to pray. Remember to pray and pray on all the people and things that matter in your life. Pray anytime. Pray what's on your heart. And pray, and when you pray, remember that you are never alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. I just have an announcement to make at this time. Um, you know, on Sunday, May 17th, our church council had voted to extend the cancellation of all in-church gatherings, in-person gatherings at the church until June 30th. You know, that decision was based on the governor's uh, safer at home order that was in place at the time. Now. The situation is changing rapidly. This situation is very, very fluid. And on Monday, May 18th, the governor had announced a gradual reopening of churches in the month of June. Now, we don't have any specifics on, on that, um, but we'll continue to, to monitor the situation and keep you updated on that. In the meantime, you know, our Church Reopen Task Force uh, has met and we've had uh, discussions about how to pre prepare uh, for the eventual reopening of the Church. And, um, you know, it's important to remember that this virus may be with us for a while. You know, it may be several months uh, before it is completely eradicated. Uh, with that in mind, you know, the safety of our members uh, and all our visitors is of the utmost uh, importance and a priority for, for us. Um, you know, I'd like to open church um, as soon as possible, like many of you uh, would like to meet together and gather together again in church. But we want to do it in a safe and responsible way. And so we won't open our doors until we, we feel confident that the church is taking all the necessary precautions to ensure that our church campus is a safe environment for everyone. And so we have our church task force who are, are busy making preparations for that. And so if you have any questions for our church reopen task force, you can uh, email your questions to me at revscott.com wucc at gmail.com, okay? Um, I'd like to thank everyone for sending in their uh, offerings and tithes to the church during this time, too. Uh, and um, you can continue to send your offerings uh, to this address that's listed below. Wailua United Church of Christ, P.O. Box 663, Wailua, Hawaii 96791. And at this time, I'd like to say uh, a dedication for the offerings that we have received thus far. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for all the offerings and donations that we have received. These are gifts we know that have come from you and now we have returned them with gratitude uh, and thank you for, for these gifts. And Lord, help us to use these gifts so that they may be a help, that they may be a blessing for others uh, at this time. Please bless the givers, bless the gifts, and 
again, thank you for all that you have done for us. In the name of Christ, amen. Well, we've come to the end of our worship service. Again, thank you for joining us today. And remember, remember to pray. And pray what's on your heart. Pray whatever may be troubling you. Pray to give thanks to, to God. And remember that Jesus lives in you. Jesus lives in you. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. Amen. And wash your hands.